All praise is to Allah. We seek his aid and his assistance and ask his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one will be able to mislead him. Whomever he leads astray, nobody can guide him. I testify there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone without partner and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassili amli wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. O my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me. Remove the impediment from my speech so that they may understand what I say. Assalamu alaikum sisters. Um, Jazakallah Khair for joining me, Fahmida, today. Um, you can probably tell from my voice that I'm quite nervous to be sharing this um, awe-inspiring name of Allah, um, as sabur um, And the reason for that is, is because I don't feel like myself that I'm a very patient person. It's something that I'm definitely working on. And it's something that over the years that I've been really trying hard to develop. But um, as Allah's name, as sabur means the most perfectly patient one he's he's you know his patience is complete and it's perfect um compared to that you know we can never compare to that so inshallah i'll try my best to um share my reflections with you so last week i covered the name as shakur which is the most appreciative and we talked about how as shakur means that allah appreciates many many folds over for the little that we do and his appreciation is we we see it in this world from the blessings that we get and um the you know the infinite blessings of jannah that may we all receive i mean so i thought it would be really fitting to move on to the name as sabur which is the most patient one and um we know as um you know muslims that you know it's very important to have both shukr and sabr that they have a um interlinking relationship with one another and um in the past we've covered this hadith and this hadith actually mentions both of the um of both of sabr and shukr so i'll read that hadith to you it's amazing is the affair of the believer verily all of his affairs are good and this is not for anyone except the believer if something good or happiness befalls him, he is grateful, and that is good for him. And if something of harm befalls him, he is patient, and that is good for him, and that's in Sahih Muslim. So this hadith mentions gratitude and patience, and it's saying how whatever our external circumstance, good or bad, quote unquote bad, that for the believer, especially, the, you know, for the believer, any um, situation is good because if we grateful, then that's good for us. And if we patient, then that's also good for us. So whatever our external circumstance, our internal attitude is what will bring the goodness in our life and the blessings for us. So um, what I found interesting was how um, Allah has these two names. He has um, the name Ash-Shakur and sabur and um, Ibn al-Qayyim actually talked about how Iman is of two parts so half of our Iman is sabr and half of our Iman is shukr and it's interesting that he used the word Iman because <clears throat> Islam if it was Islam it would be our out outward actions that everybody knows that you know you, you know you take the shahada and everybody's a witness that you know you've become a Muslim but <clears throat> but iman is our inward deeds it's our it's the inward state of our heart it's the faith in our heart and nobody will know that except for allah only allah will know what's inside of our heart so half of um, our iman is sabr and half of our iman is shukr which shows how you know what a major component of uh, you know for a muslim this is 
So, um, you know, I found it amazing that Allah has two of these names and how as his slaves, you know, we can call on him with these two beautiful names, as Shakur and as Sabur, and ask him to help us and guide us and inspire us to have Sabur and Shukur in our lives. So um, what I would like you to do now, sisters, is um, in the chat box, I want you to um, define what you um what do you define as patience so i'd like your definition of patience so when you think of patience <coughs> what does that bring up for you <coughs> so zahra says self-control mariam says withholding of anger uh, the ability to wait for something or to endure something not complaining and happy with Allah's decree, which I don't practice, of course, so we all have our struggles. Um, both patience and gratitude must be practiced. Neither is easy. You have to be both actively grateful and patient. Sometimes we say Alhamdulillah, followed by a list. But I speak for myself here. Um, okay, so sometimes I think what the sister's saying is that, you know, we say Alhamdulillah with our tongue and, you know, we have to you know, have an attitude of Alhamdulillah, where our heart speaks that as well. Self-restraint, accepting of a situation, to be able to accept fate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasure overcomes over everything that displeases you. Doing your best and leaving the rest to Allah. Acceptance and not reacting negatively with a negative, with a difficult situation. So accepting the qadr of Allah, yes. So, um, what I would like you to do now is on a scale of one to ten, I'd like you to um, say how patient you are. So one being not patient at all and ten being super patient. So where do you put yourself on this um, scale of patience? And you can be honest because we're all here to support each other. Yeah. Anybody want to share? Oh, sorry, I'm not with the chat. That's like lots of people sharing. Um, two, one, ten, three. Okay. Mashallah, Farida. Mashallah, Janaza. Two. <laughs> it depends on the situation, subhanAllah. It varies depending on what is happening because I've grown, grown older. So that's really interesting how quite a few of us sisters have said that our patience depends on the situation on what's happening outside but from what we've covered so far that we can see that patience is actually you know not dependent on the external situation rather it's you know how we feel internally that will um dictate you know the the outside of us so um the next question i want to ask you is what things are you working on to become more patient on so what is a working progress for you what do you would you like to improve your patience on staying quiet say less yes i've been thinking about this a lot as well because if we just stay quiet we could save ourselves from a lot of issues i think children controlling my tongue and stepping back from a situation to breathe trying to be closer to allah helps me be more patient with children yes watch be patient with myself act don't react yep try to ignore the situation not reacting to kids angrily less talking walk away yep so, so quite a few sisters have said you know staying quiet so just when, when we feel that anger if we can take the advice of our prophet sallam, where we just try and you know speak good or um, remain silent i think that would help us a lot so um the word sabr moving on comes from the root of sad ba and ra and it has the um these connotations the classical arabic connotations to be patient to be enduring to endure trial or affliction with good manner to be contented in trial or affliction without show of complaint which is so difficult 
um, to make no distinction between comfort and affliction. So this is saying how whatever the external situation that our patients shouldn't waver, it shouldn't make any difference to how we internally feel, which is the true beautiful patients, which we're all aiming for, inshallah. To bear calmly, to persevere cheerfully, so to even be happy, this is what the you know root of sabr points towards, to, to persevere cheerfully, to be t steadfast, constant, restrain, confine, withhold from something. So from this definition, you can see, you know, it's very, a very broad spectrum of a definition. And it, it's not just about, you know, bearing through a struggle, you know, you just bear through a suffering with your body. This definition goes beyond that. It's trying to show us to not just physically living through it, but to be mentally present in which, whatever situation we're in and to be conscious of our attitude throughout it. So as a Muslim, we're supposed to look at the bigger picture and our bigger picture isn't just what's happening in front of us, but our bigger picture goes all the way to, you know, to the next life. And the only way that we can do that is, um, you know, in remembering Allah to be conscious of Allah through, you know, throughout our life, because very often, you know, we, you know, we, we all want to be patient, but are we patient? And, you know, this is to myself, I'm speaking first and foremost, that, you know, it's always there in the back of your mind. But when a situation arises, it goes, you know, it just, we just react without thinking because we're not being conscious of Allah. So from a human perspective, it's a real struggle, patience is, it really needs us to be super conscious all the time. You know, we all enormously, you know, struggle with patience and, you know, it's up and down every day. It's, it's, it's not constant. We have to make that conscious effort, you know, to be patient. But for Allah, who is, you know, the most patient and his patience is, com you know, is complete. Um, you know, he, he's, he, he doesn't have the need to be patient how we have a need to be patient. He, he's beyond and above all needs. So when we are patient, it's for our own benefit because without patience in our life, we would just go about um, living how we want and, you know, very possibly destroying relationships, destroying our life, destroying, you know, we'd have no peace in our life without patience. So when we are patient, it's for our own you know, it serves us, it's for our own benefit that we need to be patient. It's for us to attain a higher character, you know, to, to um, attain more love in our heart for, you know, for those around us to benefit and for us to benefit and, you know, ultimately to, you know, to, to have that higher rank in Jannah. But um, when Allah is most patient, this is for our benefit. He is patient out of his love and mercy for us as for us his creation so there's a hadith in um in bukhari and muslim where allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no one is more patient in bearing offensive things um sorry no one is more patient in bearing offensive offensive things that he hears than allah may he be glorified and exalted others are associated with him a son is attributed to him but he still grants them health and provision. So subhanAllah, despite all these wrongs that the creation do against Allah after everything that, you know, he's given us and blessed us with, you know, he continues being patient with us, you know, in these, you know, these major sins where a son is attributed to him. He, he continues blessing us. We still have, you know, so many blessings. He doesn't take that away from us. So this name, as sabur is actually linked to his name, Al-Halim, the forbearing which we've covered so um you know we we said how al halim is the one who sees wrong of what people do but he doesn't seem to punish them so um in a in surah fatir in ayah 45 um allah says and if allah were to impose blame on the people for what they have earned he would not leave upon the earth any creature but he defers them for a specified term and when their time comes then indeed Allah has ever been of his servant seeing. So again, despite seeing everything, Allah is, you know, deferring that time. He, he's not quick in punishing us. He's giving us time 
um, to rectify ourselves, to reflect on what we're doing wrong, and to return to Allah in our, you know, in the best way that we can, so we can benefit. So, um, so, so, so he, you know, he continues giving us so many um, chances and opportunities to repent and return to him, and you know. You know, if you, you know, if you, you know, I'm not comparing, but when you look at us and in terms of our patience, at how quick we are to, you know, to blame people or to um, to banish them from our lives or, you know, in that moment to forget about who they are, you know, we, we're so quick to be impatient. But subhanAllah, Allah does, you know, He doesn't immediately punish us. He, he could easily, you know, like the ayah, Quran I said, there'll be no creature left on this earth. If, if you know if he was to rightfully you know punish us but he doesn't out of his because he's a sabur and because he's the most merciful so um how can we then live by this name so of course trying to be patient and we know that allah loves the patient and allah is with the patient and you know the theme of patience is mentioned over 90 times in the quran and this um hadith so beautiful um it says whomsoever would try to be patient allah will give him patient patience and no one is granted a better a, a gift better and more comprehensive than patience so in the hadith it actually says whoever tries to be patient so allah's not even asking us you know we have to be patient despite all the benefits for us he's telling you know he's saying to try in this hadith to try and to be patient and um it, you know patience is a gift for us and it's the most comprehensive gift because it affects us in so many areas of our life so um the first area of our life that would impact is your relationship with your own self so you know so often you know we're not patient with ourselves you know we make a mistake and we feel like we're a failure but this is actually a trick of shaitan so Whatever your goals are in life, whether you know you want to recite Quran or whether you want to um, go ahead in your career or you know in your education, you know we should be patient with ourselves. We should try our best, which is what Allah ex expects from us to try, and and then be patient, because you know when we don't when we lose that patience, that's when we give up, and you know it, you know that that's not what you know. If we want to continue, we have to have this um, you know patience you know in the back of our mind where we want to be conscious of these patients so um the next area um would be our test in life so it's having um full trust that allah doesn't test us beyond our limits that whatever we're going through we have the ability to handle this allah wouldn't test us if we weren't able to do this so um you know it's remembering that our tests have a purpose and um our tests aren't there to break us or to humiliate us like so often we feel like you know we question our tests and we compare our lives to other people and we think that you know other people have got it easier but our tests are specially designed for us because allah knows what we can handle and you know when when you're conscious of allah and you know the even the most difficult tests can become easy for us so um this sorry i've got a hadith here that i wanted to share that i used to um when, when i was going through difficulties this this hadith um would give me so much um you know so much joy and so much um comfort this hadith subhanallah so whoever allah wants good for him he puts them to test he puts them through difficulties like a diamond or some metal that has to be burned. And then that which is bad for, from it is removed so that you have that which is the pure diamond or the pure gold or whatever. Put them to tests, trials and difficulties. So our tests, the purpose of them is for us to come out shining like diamonds, to be the best version of ourselves. You know, it, it, it isn't, can you put that? Yes, I'll, I'll send that hadith on the group. So th this hadith gives so much hope to us that, 
you know, not to get stuck in our difficulties, but try and look beyond the difficulties and see what Allah is trying to teach us. Where is he trying to take us? So one of the things that I found is that when we go through really difficult tests in our life, um, you know, it's, it's easier to kind of um, be more conscious, to be, to be more patient and to remember Allah. And, that, and that's one of the blessings of going through difficulties because, you know, you will always be in that state of remembrance of Allah. But when, you know, when life gets easier, and you know you're living your everyday life and the mundane sort of you know you're on autopilot we forget and you know we become less patient something happens like our child does something that we don't like and we just immediately sort of snap you know we don't um we don't pause to reflect but you know in this situation it's patience that we need to have but it's also gratitude so it's, you know, being conscious of Allah's name as shakur as well, because alhamdulillah, you know, we're not going through such a difficult test maybe, but we still, you know, we need to be grateful in that time. So we still need to be patient, but we need to be grateful as well also. So the, um, the last way that I've got um, for us to um, bring this name in is to then be patient with others. So whether it's your children, or your um, spouse or you know your in-laws or family or siblings you know try and be more patient to those around us like when we think about how patient Allah is with us how many mistakes we've made um, you know from as far back as we can remember to where we are now subhanallah that you know when we think of this th th this should really encourage us to be um, more merciful and patient towards others and you know very often like we look at our children and you know whether it's teens and we think oh you know you shouldn't be doing this you know you should be praying more on time do I need to remind you again and we forget that at their age what we were like because you know even now we're not perfect they just don't see that side of us but um you know it, it's through our patience that we'll build those relationships with, the, with our loved ones so just like Allah waits for us to change our ways we should do that for other for others so um i've got um a dua that i wanted to um finish with inshallah and this is one of the 40 rabbana duas and it's rabbana afrigh alayna sabra wa tawaffana muslimin our rab bestow on us patience steadfastness and endurance and make us die as muslims submitting to you and that's in surah al-a'raf um, verse 126 so um i mean to that dua so if any sisters would like to share anything that's come up for them you're more than welcome to do so so you can write in the chat box or unmute if you'd like to say anything SubhanAllah, perfect timekeeping from Coach Fahmida, MashaAllah. I need to take lessons from you, Fahmida, MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. um, such a beautiful reminder. I think we all really, really needed it, especially in Ramadan, you know, when we are fasting, when we may be energy deplete, when we might be sleep deprived, it's easy for our conscious level to, um, to come down and all we can then see is oh i'm tired i'm hungry I've got no energy and it what we've talked about in the past is we get this me 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 lens on i'm tired i've still got iftar to make oh my god 101 things to, still to do da, da, da. you know it's getting gray outside i need to bring the laundry in <laughs> so much and we have this me 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 lens that understandably comes on but for me, to, you probably can uh, agree with me that when we do have that me, me, me lens on, that's when we're restricted and restricting ourselves in our patience. Because then I can't zoom out to see the bigger picture that you were talking about, right, Fahmida? That you can't see what's going on beyond, you know, that my child is screaming at me you know having a tantrum not because they want to have you know make my life hard 
and it adds on to my to-do list but because you know they're hungry or that you know something's happened for them i can't zoom out then because i've just got my me 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 lens on absolutely and ramadan is actually called um the month of patience and it is like you were saying when you take away you know the food the sleep and you feel hungry and you feel really energy depleted that you know you're stripped away of your kind of normal comforts and that's when the real test of patience comes because taking away all those things that we kind of rely on like you know we become hangry then don't yeah. we um you know, you know or taking when you take all that away like are you still going to be patient like do we need you know allah's taking away our physical sort of comforts because you know the patient the patience that we talked about is iman which is in the heart so you know even if you are hungry or you're tired or exhausted you know you can still we can still be patient allah knows what we you know capable of absolutely and it was really interesting actually that task that you got us to do earlier where it was wh where you would score yourself um and interestingly enough you know one of the sisters said well actually i'm very patient at work but i'm not patient when it comes to my personal life or i'm very patient when it comes to x but i'm not patient where it, when it comes to i don't know my husband or you, and it, there seems to be a fluctuation right which means that it can't be the thing that's cause, causing us to be impatient because we've just proved that we can be patient in our workplace or we've proved that when other people are around then we're just we're really patient like we're not going to scream and shout at our children when we've got other people in the house do you know what i mean so it can fluctuate so what is that telling us we need to check our internal state where are we why are we giving ourselves sometimes that permission to explode and be impatient when at other times we can really bite our tongue so what is it meaning for us for me i think there's a couple of people that have got their hands raised if everybody's um happy to join us we, we can stay on for a few minutes um if you have time yeah so did you want to take any of the yeah so um so sister meru would you like to speak I just like my sister for me that was a really good explanation of the name. Um, just as Dr. Armin was speaking now, the fact that we have different patients when it comes to sort of outside people, and then when it's kind of closer to home with our children and uh, our husbands or etc. Um, I've kind of been reflecting on this for a while, and I think a lot of that has got to do with when we talk to or when we're dealing with our loved ones, um, like our children and our husband. It's more a sense of um, that's how we would deal with ourselves because we love them. We think it's okay to treat them how we treat ourselves. So because we lose patience with ourselves, it's okay to lose patience with them. Um, and I think I think as Sabur, it kind of this name is so beautiful because Allah is more patient with us than we are with ourselves. So that's what I want to say. Sakala. That's so true that Allah is more patient than we are with ourselves. Like we give ourselves such a hard time and Allah, you know, carries on being patient with us and loving us and, you know, he wants the best of us. And what you're saying about, you know, how we are with other people is because, you know, it's a more personal relationship, isn't it? Like we've almost internalized those people. Like we, you know, whatever they do, we take that more personally. And that's why, you know, we, you know, we, we, we probably more reactive, but if we really look into, you know where patience comes from it comes from our heart and it's for the sake of allah that you know if we really you know train ourselves to get to that state where whatever the external situation that we react the same way because we're doing it for allah and absolutely and it reminds me of the hadith that the best of you are those that are best to your families um i'm par paraphrasing that um but you know there's a reason why there's a le level of betterment there you know because the higher up the closer and more personal you get in terms of your relationships the more it's asking of you to identify what's going on for yourself so actually 
Why can we tolerate things that other people are doing, but we can't tolerate the same things that our loved ones are doing? Because it means something very much more personally to us. What does it mean for us? So it's really good to explore that. And that's what we do, you know, when we are in our conversations um, with sisters to explore what does it mean for us? Because Allah doesn't change the condition of a person until they change what is within themselves. So, Allah, you know, if you think that you're impatient because of your children, your household, this and that. Allah, who has the ultimate control of all of that, won't change any of that until you look at what is within yourselves. So it's really important. And may we use the last few, um, you know, a week or, week or so of, of Ramadan to really reflect on that. What is it with me that I need to address? SubhanAllah. And finally, I just want to remind ourselves that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was our ultimate role model. You know, when we get bogged down with the me, me, me glasses on, if we remind ourselves that SubhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam endured so much, so much, born an orphan, lost his mum, lost his, then his grandfather you know when he received the message how much was he um you know gunned down for that he really was persecuted by his very own you know at one point his daughter was even um, married to a member of the, the Quraysh, you know, that, that's difficult, you know, and I know that many sisters, we go through difficulties when our children, uh, those of that are older, that choose a, a life partner that we're not in agreement with, subhanAllah, and then losing child after child after child. Was there any difficulty that he didn't endure? And yet he displayed such patience. Now, one may ask, well, why is that? Or how did he do that? Or it's because he was a prophet. But look at his intimate relationship with Allah. Look at his close relationship with Allah. He was forgiven his sins and yet he was grateful. He was the one that was up all night in tahajjud. Why? Because shouldn't he be grateful? SubhanAllah. So as you started, Fahmida, sabr and shukr really do go hand in hand. So the next time you're going crazy, screaming, you know, the kids are doing your head in or you're in your personal life, a personal relationship is right, really, um, really testing you. See if you can bring about shukr in that situation. The moment you can bring in shukr, I feel that sabr will, will shortly follow. Inshallah. And I think on that note, Fahmida, we can end unless you wanted to say something, sis. No, uh, Inshallah. I think um, that was really beautiful that they go hand in hand. And that's um, yes. the point of like how Allah has both of these names and how, you know, we should try and live by both of these names, Inshallah, because they, you know, it, it's a part of our Iman too. So, um, I'll read the dua. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Jazakallah, sisters, for joining us again.